Griner Talks about sustainability and transformation. A Griner podcast episode. This is Griner Talks, our podcast about sustainability and transformation. My name is Alexander. I'm part of the sustainability team here at the Greiner Group headquarters in Austria. And today it's my pleasure to welcome a very special guest who is based in Singapore, who is running a nonprofit organization that wants to end plastic pollution and who's with me right now. Welcome Jacob Dürr, CEO of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. Thank you very much and it's great to be here. Hi from Vienna to Singapore and thanks for taking your time. You're more than welcome. Jacob, you are practically on the other side of the world. I just had a look before our conversation. It's roughly 10,000 kilometers. And yet we are facing a very similar problem. And I'm not even talking about the climate crisis here. What's the corona situation for you in Singapore? Well, we're very fortunate here in Singapore. First of all, um, I'm in the office right now. Um, we can work 50% of the time in the office. And the number of corona cases in Singapore has literally been zero for the last many months, um, which makes it life really almost back to normal for us. Um, shops are open, restaurants are open, and we can move around freely. One thing that is still a requirement is to wear masks and social distancing, but that's very easy to comply with knowing that there is no risk of contracting COVID in Singapore. That's very good news, or at least uh, some positive developments, because the situation in Austria is quite different. If I'm right, you were earlier in Singapore with uh, the first cases of Corona. That's correct. In Singapore, that was where some of the early cases were detected back in late January, early February, I believe, uh, 2020. But the government took control of the situation very fast. And basically since mid-summer, We have been living a, I would say, almost normal life with, with shops and restaurants and, and facilities open. There is so much more we could talk or discuss about Corona, but we want to talk about a different issue today. But before we do that, Jacob, I'd like to give our listeners a chance to get to know you as a person, at least a little bit. So may I ask you to make some simple decision or simple choices as a start? Absolutely. So my first question to you would be, Hiking in the mountains or going to the beach? What's your preference? Hiking in the mountains. Next question. Wiener schnitzel or chili crab? A dish that's apparently popular in Singapore. That's true. Uh, since I'm married to an Austrian, I better say Wiener schnitzel. <laughs> so you have already mentioned your connection to Austria. Is there something more you can share with us? Well, I've lived in Austria actually for, for five years while I was working with the United Nations. And, and when I was in Austria, I met uh, my future wife, Eva, who is with me here now in, in Singapore as well. And, um, and Austria in many ways is, is my second home, was actually becoming my first home. I'm originally from Denmark, but at the time when retirement will come one day, um, our home will be in Austria and actually in Vienna. So uh, Austria holds a very special place in, in my heart. And And it's a place where we spend a lot of our free time. Of course, when we lived in Europe, it was an easy place to travel to. And now when we're going on summer holidays from Singapore, Austria, and in particular Vienna is, is on, the, on the list to visit. That's a very special connection indeed. And please make sure to visit us at our new office in Vienna the next time you're around. I look forward to it. <laughs> next question for you. Paper or plastics? Both have a need in society. So I will say both. Single use or reuse? Single use for the protection of our health workers and for safety and hygiene. Otherwise, I'm very much for reuse. I was kind of expecting this answer when having a look at your career, because for more than 20 years, you have been working with environmental issues at the United Nations in countries like Kenya, Senegal, Austria and also Switzerland. In your last position at the UN, you were Director of Chemicals and Health at the United Nations Environment Program in Geneva. And now you are running an environmental NGO. What made you choose that kind of career path? Was that always clear for you? So it was not always clear that I would end up working in, in the field of, of environment, to be very honest. I'm educated as an economist and My education would normally have brought me into a bank sitting in a financial department. But 
at a certain point during my studies, I felt that there's more to life than than working in in a bank and working in in the private sector. And I've always been very involved in and dependent on nature and felt that there was something that we as individuals and human beings have to do to protect the environment in which we live. And that in many ways drew me to the United Nations. I ended up working almost 20 years for the United Nations in environment program and but also felt at that point that policymaking and regulation, while that's an important part of the equation in creating solutions for the protection of the environment, also the private sector has a very important role. And that's in reality why I decided and make, to make the jump from the, the United Nations to the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, which is indeed is a, a non-profit, but it's a non-profit that's funded by the private sector. And my hope is and my ambition is not only to end plastic waste in the environment, but also to bring the private sector together with governments and policymakers and create holistic solutions for this particular topic, but also pro for the broader sustainability agenda. And you're already mentioning the, the goals of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. Now, this nonprofit organization bears its mission in its name. You want to put an end to plastic waste. Can you explain a little bit more? Who is the Alliance? How does the Alliance work? That's correct. We want to put an end to plastic waste. We believe that plastic or any waste for that matter does not belong in our environment. It does not belong in our oceans. And it's for that reason that um, a number of some of the largest companies in the world came together a bit more than two years ago, recognizing that They want to be and can be and should be part of the solution. And they established the Alliance to End Plastic Waste in January 2019. So we're almost two years or a bit more than two years into our life. And our membership has grown from 25 companies in the very early days to more than 50 companies today, representing what we call the full plastic value chain. And that means we have companies representing the chemicals and petrochemicals industry, We have some of the biggest brands and retailers as part of the alliance, as well as, of course, converters and waste management companies. And by bringing them together, we create a new ecosystems of opportunities for creating solutions to this environmental problem, but also creating a system where we on one hand can protect the environment, but also contribute towards a circular economy. But we also realize that as, as an alliance, as a representation of a number of companies that we can't do it alone. And therefore, it's critical for us to work with all the other actors that are operating this space. And that means we are working closely with governments, both at the national level and at the local level. We are working very closely with civil society organizations, UN agencies, as well as development banks and financial institutions. And by bringing that whole ecosystem of actors together, We believe indeed that we can put together an end to plastic waste in the environment. And when looking at the list of supporters of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste, it's like the who is who of companies working in the plastics value chain. Um, is it more than just a commitment than a marketing tool? What are these companies actually promising to do? What are they actually doing? I think the difference between the Alliance and many of the other actors out there that are busy in the space around addressing the issue of plastic and plastic waste in the environment is that we are moving from commitment to real action. So we are not calling ourselves a thought leader, but we are calling ourselves an action leader. So all our activities is around developing new solutions, solutions that are sustainable and economically viable, solutions that are contributing to the circular economy and are scalable. And because we have that unique composition of member companies, we are able to not only tap into their technical know-how and expertise, but also literally to sit them down around a table and create solutions with our project partners that can create a real impact on the ground. And I'm very excited that despite the fact that we have been faced with, with COVID and everyone in the world has been impacted by it, and it has by no means been, been easy for us either, We have over the last 12 months been able to approve more than 20 new projects um, in, in different parts of, of the value chain and in different parts of the world. We've been able to start the implementation of those projects. And that's everything ranging from putting in place 
integrated waste management systems in smaller communities in Bali, where we are operating, to working with startups and incubating them, getting them investment ready, working on cleanups with other organizations and developing educational and awareness programs. So a lot has happened over the last 12 months and we're only just beginning and, and we have a very busy plan ahead of us for 2021 and, and the future years to come. And our division, Kreiner Packaging, has joined the Alliance to End Plastic Waste at the end of last year. Can you explain what does that mean for us as a business? What's our concrete commitment? So first of all, we are very excited and very happy that Greiner has joined the Alliance as an important packaging company in Europe, covering an important part of the world where the Alliance is not operating today. So not only are you able to join a group of countries that is committed to this agenda, but you will also be able to join with your technical expertise in, in developing the solutions that in many ways do not exist today, in particular around waste collection, uh, around packaging and around recycling. So we hope and look forward to inviting you not only to participate in conversations, but in developing the solutions that really are required for the transformation that we are looking as an alliance to lead. We have many entry points for our member companies, including for Greiner. We have five different investments themes that we are focusing on, everything from recycling to design for circularity to societal behavior and engaging with cities through development of integrated waste management systems. And each of our member companies participates in these discussions and, and we meet on a very regular basis. So Greiner will be not only a member of the family, but a critical player in the family of developing solutions to end plastic waste in the environment and contributing to a circular economy. And Jacob asking very boldly, do you truly believe that the plastics crisis will be solved one day? Uh, will pictures of polluted beaches, uh, marine littering, will that be part of history books one day? It's very hard to believe. It is hard to believe, but we believe that it is possible. And I still remember when I was walking on, on beaches when I was younger and, and they were clean and we didn't even think about waste coming in from our oceans. When we now visit almost any beach in the world, there is pollution, unfortunately. And I'm confident not only with the work that the Alliance and, and our projects and activities, but also with the work of all the other actors out there, that we can actually put an end to this problem and therefore come back to a situation where beaches, again, will be clean. We do realize, however, that this will not happen overnight. We need systemic changes and new solutions to the forefront, um, and that doesn't happen from one day to the other. But we have to start and we have to act now. And if only if we act now and we act together, that we can start developing the solutions so that we, in and let me say X number of years, can be back to a situation where we have not only a cleaner environment, but a clean environment and clean beaches, no matter where we are in the world. And you said it will not happen overnight. And you said uh, X number of years. Can you be more precise? Um, when will we have clean beaches again? Will that be in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years? Can you give us an outlook? Let, let me be a bit provocative here. I think getting clean beaches can happen overnight because we can clean them up and then they are clean, but there is a great chance that they will be polluted again. And that's why we from an alliance side believe that cleaning is an important part of, of the solution, but it's not the only part. We need to stop the leakage of plastic waste into the environment or any waste for that matter. And it's only if we're able to solve that part of the problem that we will be able to create the lasting solutions. I'm hesitant to put a, a year on it. But I'm confident that when we in 10 years from now will be walking along the shores of many coastlines, we will see significantly less waste and plastic pollution in our environment. So you have addressed that cleanup is a very important part uh, of the solution. Another important part or even more important is to stop the leakage of plastic. So let's assume that we can stop the leakage of plastic into natural environments. Will it ever be possible to fully remove the current plastic waste from our natural environments, from oceans, from mountains and wherever plastics is? The reality is that 11 million tons of plastic waste enters our oceans on an annual basis. 
The reality is also that 3 billion people on this planet, they do not have access to waste collection. And these are significant numbers, and these are numbers that have been growing over the years. And that also means that there is, unfortunately, a lot of waste sitting in the environment today, both on land, and that can be on the shores of, of any coastline, it can be in the mountains, but there's also a significant amount of plastic waste sitting in the ocean. Cleaning it all up is indeed a huge challenge. And to be very honest, I think it's a challenge that is almost beyond our reach today with the technologies and the systems that we have in place. Having said that, there is a lot of investment going into creating new solutions, in particular around cleanup and cleanup of our oceans. While it's not an area that we as an alliance is investing directly in with the investment of many others, I am actually quite hopeful and confident that we, not today, but in the relatively near future, will be able to create some lasting solutions that can actually not only prevent the leakage, but also can help us bringing in the plastic that sits in the oceans back into shores and hopefully back into um, to recycling, recognizing that the value of plastic should not get lost because it contains value, important value, that is actually estimated at between 80 and $120 billion on an annual basis that's lost into to what leaks into the environment. The plastics crisis is a global problem. It's an extremely complex problem. It's also a business case. And you have mentioned the lack of waste management systems before. Whose responsibility is it to create that kind of waste management systems and that infrastructure, which is mainly missing in the global south? It's a responsibility of everyone. And that's why it's very important for us to work closely with national governments and with local governments. It's also equally important for us to work with development institutions and financial institutions. And it's only if we come together around, you know, collaboration and cooperation in creating these systems where we will be able to develop the solutions around waste management systems. If we expect others to do it, it won't happen, but we can work with others in making it happen. But of course, everyone plays an important role and we can't do it as an alliance, neither can any private sector company. And that's why for us working with governments and implementing national policies around waste management is very, very important. Government buy-in, government commitment, both at the national level and local level is critical, but it's not enough. We need a capital injection. We need injection of technical know-how and expertise, and we need development institutions and financial institutions that provides uh, resources and loans to national and local governments. So it's the collection of the ecosystem that can create the solutions to put in place integrated waste management systems. Again, repeating for three billion people on this planet who today have no access to it and have no choice when it comes to waste disposal from households than putting it in the environment. Can you give us one or two concrete examples of achievements of the Alliance to End Plastic Waste so far? What are you most proud of? What have you done to tackle some of the problems that you have just mentioned? So we have a number of projects already ongoing. We have projects here in Southeast Asia, in Indonesia, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in the Philippines, in India. We also have projects in Africa and Latin America. And I think although we are relatively young, we are very proud that some of our projects are already starting to see a real change and a real impact. And one particular project that I'm very proud of and where I had a chance to visit um, before travel was put under constraints was in Bali in Jembrana, a small community in the northwestern part of Bali with 150,000 people where 13,000 tons of waste enters the environment on an annual basis. And when I visited that community, I was also visiting the beach and I was literally walking on two meters of waste, a beach without sand, but a beach covered in waste, not only plastic waste, but any waste coming from the household. What we have done in that community, working with an organization called Project Stop that is sponsored by Borealis and Systemic, we have been able to put in place a waste collection system. And by waste collection, that means a system that already at the level of households are putting in place bins, something as basic as bins, a green bin and a yellow bin. 
working with the households and understanding the important role that households and families and citizens play in making sure that we separate waste at the level of household between organic waste and other waste. What this system that we have supported as well as doing is making sure that this waste is being picked up from the household and brought to a centralized sorting place where we have put in place operations where people are now working against a conveyor belt where all the waste is coming in and where the sorting is, is happening. And the waste that has value, include, including the plastic waste, is then brought to a centralized recycling facility and sold. And while it's a relatively young project, um, we are starting to see the impact and we're starting slowly to see that less and less waste is leaking into the environment. What we're starting in this community is also now the cleaning up. So not only are we turning off the tap so we will ensure that no more waste is coming into the environment, but we're also removing the waste that sits there along the rivers and on the beach. And I'm quite confident in a year from now, not only will it be a sustainable and economically viable project, but we will also see a completely clean environment. So I look forward to visiting them and having walked on a very dirty beach and a very polluted beach to be walking on a beach where there will be sand. And I, when I was there, I spoke to the local communities and it was very heartening to see then some of the children they are living, you know, what in many ways would be a dream for many at a close to a beach in, in Bali. But for them, it was a very polluted environment. And if we can bring nature back to them, an environment where there's prosperity and hope, then we can create an, a, a community where there will be growth, where there will be social protection and health and obviously also education and other possibilities for people that are otherwise often faced with many challenges in life. I also believe personally that plastics pollution and the plastics crisis is one of the biggest challenges that we are facing today. And one of the most important solutions to tackle this kind of challenge is to create a circular economy. And that's also what we are trying here at Kreiner. Actually, in less than 10 years, by 2030, we want to be a fully circular business. And that's an incredible challenge. Jacob, what can a company like Kreiner contribute to solve that crisis to reach that target? Is it enough to join the Alliance to End Plastic Waste? So joining the Alliance to End Plastic Waste creates opportunities for engagement with many other companies in creating solutions that can be implemented in the countries where I think the challenge is the biggest, but also where many companies can learn from and bring those ideas and solutions back to their own business models. But joining the Alliance, let me say, is not enough, but it is an important part of being part of creating solutions for ending plastic waste in the environment. What we see and what is, I think, very encouraging for us is that many of our member companies, including Griner, has very strong sustainability focus and sustainability targets. Um, and we believe that further investments are always necessary in, that field, in this field by each of our member companies. We also know that many companies are working with other actors in, in the space of plastic waste management. Um, and we believe that's a critical part of, of any organization's contribution. So joining the Alliance is one part of the solution, but it's not the only part. Uh, but we hope that we can work and support your efforts as well in further advancing um, your investments towards contributing to a circular economy. Jacob, I would love to keep discussing that issue with you. There are so many more questions I could ask, but we are finally or slowly approaching the end of this podcast episode. And to end it on a different note, I would like to invite you to do a short word wrap with me, if that's fine for you. Absolutely. <laughs> so I will give you a few simple terms and you can answer with uh, one word or with one sentence, whatever comes to your mind. All right. Okay, so let's start. First term, future. Hope. Globalization. But we also need to act locally. Profits. Sustainable business is good business. Singapore. Prosperity. Austria. Beauty. Your favorite animal. A dog. Nature. Enjoy it but don't take it for granted. And last but not least, your message to the world? We are all part of creating the solution that can end plastic waste in the environment. 
and create an environment of prosperity, hope and growth. As always, a very hopeful note to end on. Thank you so much for the conversation and for taking your time, Jacob. Thank you very much and looking forward to visiting you in, in Vienna. We're happy to welcome you anytime soon over here. And thank you to everybody for listening. Please subscribe to our podcast. Make sure you don't miss the next episode. Stay healthy and have a great day. Thank you. Griner Talks, a Griner podcast. Subscribe now.